Uh, Philippians chapter 3 is where we're at uh, today. And uh, like I said, uh, well, I'll talk about this in a little bit, but not right now. Philippians chapter 3. Uh, as you turn to that, uh, I hope you like this setup. Uh, we might try this more and more, where you can actually have a table if you want to write notes and things like that. And, I don't know, bring your Egg McMuffin and whatever you want to do on the table there. You know, do it if it works out for you. Uh, let me know. Give me some feedback. Not right now, but later. What you think about it? This kind of setup. Let me share a story with you. When I was about six years old, uh, and I lived in Jackson, and, and you know we lived in town, and your backyard butts up to another person's backyard, and they had this little dachshund out there, you know, a little hot dog dog, you know. And I used to go out there and reach to the fence and pet that dog, and I thought he was a friend of mine. And then one day I was reaching through the fence, and I pet him, and that sucker, he turned around, and he bit me right on the arm. And uh, I had to... My mom had to call the police, and they had to impound the dog, and I got my name in the paper and everything for getting bit by a dog. But I tell you, from that moment on, I was wary and skeptical of dogs. I really didn't trust them a whole lot. And I tell you, to this day, dogs have hounded me. The pun was intended. Uh, they have, and I've real. I mean, I got all these dog stories. I I I, I don't want to bore you with, but one I got to tell you about. Uh, you know, how many of you have gone door to door doing evangelism? You know, you knock on people's doors, and you say, "Hey, how would you like to have a Bible study?" Or sometimes it will be a campaign going on in the whole town, and and you have a a, a preacher, a guest preacher, and you invite them to come to that particular church service. But anyhow, somehow you try to bring a person to Christ through this door-to-door -door evangelism. I saw, Susan, did you do that down in Tennessee? In Georgia, that's even better yet. Anybody else done door-to-door -door work? Knocking on the door, inviting people to church, or trying to establish Bible studies with them? See what all the rest of you are missing? It's not a very effective means of evangelism, uh, but uh, anyhow, you meet a lot of people that way. And, uh, man, I got tons of stories to tell you about that. I've done a bunch of that. Well, one time I was in DeWitt, Arkansas, going door to door. And I came up to this one house, and they had a fence. It was a, a tall fence. It was taller than me. It was about, about six foot, chain link fence. And on it, they had a big sign like that. It said, beware a dog. And uh, there was a dog dish right there by the gate, and there was um, a water dish. And all of a sudden, here comes trotting up as this little teeny tiny chihuahua. He's just a little sucker, about that big, you know. He come up there and he was eating and I just started laughing. I thought that, they were making a funny, you know. Beware a dog, big tall fence, you know, and uh, little chihuahua. So I swung open that gate and I just confidently walked up to the porch. And as soon as I hit that door... I'm telling you what, this tornado of fur and claws and teeth come running around that house directly at me. Oh my goodness, he wanted to eat me. And I jumped off that porch, hit with one foot, jumped and grabbed that chain link fence, went up over the fence all in one motion as that dog slammed against the fence, wanting to eat me. You see, um, Pam, why I'm a little skittish about dogs? I mean, I can tell you one story after the other. They're after me. And uh, I, by the way, I also love dogs. Well, I am afraid. If they don't have to sense it, I'll tell them. You know, I'll wear a sign. I'll bark it if I knew it in dog talk. You know, I am. Because some dogs are not to be trusted. And you can ask, maybe some of y'all have been bit when you trusted a dog before you got to know it. I now want to be introduced. We got to know each other. Because there are some dogs that are good and some dogs that are very bad. And what's neat is in the Bible, uh, there are two different words for two, two different kinds of dogs. There is the lab dog, puppy dog, you know, the little shit zoo that you can get and put on. I, I couldn't wait to say that, you know, in church. It's a dog. I, I wasn't saying a bad word. All right. I love those. Those are one of my favorite dogs, and they're just a nice little lap dog, you know, and just sweet, and they just love on you, and you go and come home, and they're wagging their tail. Then you got the one that tried to eat me. You know, and both of those kind of dogs are combined in Matt and Pam's dog, Osa. 
Because Osa is part wolf and part puppy dog. And so Osa has this split personality. And, and so, like, Osa came to my office one day. And that dog was the little puppy dog, you know, and it was petting on me and just rubbing all on me and just loving on me. And I thought, okay, I got a dog friend. I can trust this dog. So, anyhow, Matt and Pam put the dog in the car. And uh, so I later on went over to the car and I thought, well, I said, hey, to Osa. And I went up to Osa and I started to reach into the car. And uh, next slide, please. If you can get the next slide. Is anybody there? Is that oh, Jay? No, no, go to the next one. Yeah, that's what I saw right there. <laughs> Honest truth, nothing gets Osa. She's operating out of her, her base, her, the one side of herself. That was it. I'm not kidding. I'm not exaggerating. It's all, ah, 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 ah. oh, she wanted to eat me. So dogs, you've got the, you've got a couple of different kinds of dogs. So I'm in, I'm telling you all these dog stories because we're going to talk about dogs today in Philippians chapter 3. And here's the thing that's good about preaching through a book like Philippians. Now, I wouldn't normally take and get this sermon and say, you know what, I'm going to preach about this particular topic today. But when you're preaching through a book, you kind of got to do it. And so um, I normally would have probably skipped it. I, I even told my sermon prep team today, or, or it's a Tuesday, I said, you know what, I, I really want to skip this one, but I can't. I need to preach this and it needs to be taught. Uh, Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. I like the second sermon I'm going to do uh, after Father's Day even better. But chapter 3, verse 1. Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. Oh, by the way, Jamie, can you go backwards? Go back to that other slide. You don't know reverse? No one after it. There you go. All right, I'm back to the text. Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again, and it is a safeguard for you. Watch out for those dogs, those men who do evil, those mutilators of the flesh. For it is we who are the circumcision, we who worship by the Spirit of God, who glory in Christ Jesus, and who put no confidence in the flesh. Though I myself have reason for such confidence. Big idea today comes out of this text. And that is we need to learn how to identify those who would do harm to the Lord's church and act accordingly. We need to be able to identify the dogs who might come in amongst us. And so, oh, that's some strong language Paul is using here. And by the way, Paul and our Lord, they don't mind using strong language where strong language is required. And so, first of all, who are these people that Paul is calling dogs. I mean, can you imagine that? Preacher coming in and talking about dogs, calling people dogs. Well, they're evil people and they were causing problems at the church of Philippi. And so there was a, there was a reason why Paul was trying to, uh, or was calling them these dogs, okay? These guys were trying to invoke the, the rule of circumcision on these people. Okay, they were trying to say that, you know, you've got, to, you've got to follow the laws of Moses. These were Jewish people who had become Christians, but who had brought all their Jewish heritage and their baggage along with them. And so they were saying, yeah, you need to follow Jesus, you need to have faith in Christ, but you know, you've got to follow all these laws that Moses had. You need to get circumcised. And, and they even tried to uh, say certain days of the year have to be followed this certain way, and you can only eat certain things, and, and kosher food, and so on. All right, Paul called them dogs. Now, here's the thing I want us to get, because the topics have changed, but the principle is still there. There are those who will come into a church and cause problems in the congregation. And we need to call them for who they are and identify them for who they are. Now, Paul had a specific reason why he called them dogs, okay? This was a term that they were, his, the enemies were very familiar with. The people that were causing problems in the church of Philippi. The Jewish uh, Christians... They had this background that they called people who were not like themselves dogs. You see what I'm saying? So Paul took their own term and he turned it back on them. 